Floor one is good. Why? Well, there are many reasons, but in my opinion, its themes, characters, and their motivations are a huge factor to the suspense that the Steel Ball Run race creates. There isn't just one reason, just like there isn't just one theme. Even though you guys are not brave enough to admit it, I know the real reason that we all race Steel Ball Run. It, it's for the bromance, 100%. I once heard that Araki described the theme of Steel Ball Run's manga as seeking for satisfaction, or something like that. So I kind of started thinking of the themes in Steel Ball Run, and there are a few that I would like to explore, and since I'm basically a pro at analyzing themes in JoJo at this point, yes, watch the other videos, I kind of want to talk about the most important themes that make up Steel Ball Run and why they're so amazing. Speaking of amazing, uh, how are you doing today? I mean, my music taste is amazing, yeah, naturally. Yeah, yeah, let's start the video. Girl, I am high on PCP! Alright, so a big theme of part 7, in my opinion at least, is the redemption and friendship illustrated through Johnny's personal and stand growth, but also Jairus' desire to move past his family's morals and fight for a greater cause than himself. Growth is a huge part of Steel Ball Run. Obviously, the story puts a large focus on not only Johnny's growth, but also that of Jairo and Lucy. Part 7 is about learning to recognize your faults and overcoming them to become a better person, even though that doesn't always work. All of these characters focus on uh, seeking for satisfaction in their lives. Huh, I guess Araki didn't forget about that. The concept of fatherhood in Steel Ball Run is also quite important. The theme is something that is affecting all four major characters, both Johnny and Gyro, Diego and also Valentine. I could analyze the theme of fatherhood and its nuances, but honestly, that could be reserved for an entire video in itself. My short take of this theme would be that Johnny, Gyro, Diego and also Valentine's motivations, attitude and entire view of the world stems from their fathers. For example, Valentine's strong patriotism comes from the bravery and sacrifice his father made for his country. Valentine continues the bravery and patriotism of his father as he becomes the president. Both Johnny and Jairo are affected by the fathers, however, they are different in the way that they continue the father's influence. Unlike Valentine, who continues his father's spirit, both Johnny and especially Jairo instead grows from their experience with their fathers. Both Johnny and Jairo's fathers force their son to live a certain life. Jairo's father at least realizes later on his son's potential and lets him become his own man, giving him the knowledge and resources to achieve his goals. Whilst Johnny's father is not as willing to help, Johnny has to fight for himself. But this also comes full circle with the scene towards the end of Steel Ball Run, when Johnny's father finally supports his son, which makes both the main characters have a kinda similar character arc. Diego Brando, the second antagonist of Steel Ball Run, also has some daddy issues. His father's hatred against him created and shaped Diego's view of the world. Just like Dio, his father's actions were the cause of his evil. Both Diego and Dio's mothers are both kind and caring, showing that the effects of the father's love, or lack thereof, is far greater as shaping a young boy's view of the entire world and their role inside of it, rather than their mothers and their pure love. In short, the characters of Steel Ball Run, just like myself, has some uh, d bad issues. <laughs> the Siren Sacrifice are very similar themes in Steel Ball Run because they kinda tie into one another. Almost every major character has some sort of desire that they're trying to fulfill. This desire is in their eyes what's necessary for satisfaction, and they resort to any method they can, including sacrifice, to achieve their goal. But if you notice, the only characters to really survive, aside from the obvious one that I will touch on in a second, are the ones who sacrifice selflessly. Diego sacrifices others, Hot Pants is more selfless, though her greatest sin was to sacrifice her brother, and Valentine is constantly sacrificing others for the sake of his dream of making America great again. And, well, they all fail. So, the question is, why does the Gyro die? Well, Jairo committed the ultimate selfless sacrifice by giving his life for Lucy and also Johnny. Not only does this allow Jairo to in some way achieve his ultimate desire, to have control over his own life, but this also is rewarded by having Lucy live and give Johnny the tools to defeat Valentine. Johnny also makes a sacrifice, that of bringing back Jairo, which makes it fitting that after that he can finally walk again. Alternate Diego is an interesting case since he sacrifices other people, but he also sacrificed his own leg which seemingly allowed him to win the race. 
but that scene shows the important distinction between a selfless sacrifice and just an inconvenient one. Alternate Diego was entirely selfish in the act and did not act for anyone else other than himself, or even for a good cause. So while it appears that he wins, we obviously see that Johnny will be alright and Lucy killed him, so yeah, that didn't go very well. That brings us to the last part of this, and that is Lucy, who sacrifices her innocence to help stop Valentine and save Steven. She ultimately achieves both things, but the Lucy that we see at the end is very different from the one we got to know at the start, showing how she become more mature than what she should have been if this entire journey didn't happen. I talked about Lucy a lot more in my female representation in Jojo video, so let's just move on to the sort of biggest theme in the entirety of Steel Ball Run, that being Johnny's personal redemption. In terms of main character's themes and such, it's questionable to what degree Johnny even goes for redemption. Johnny doesn't have a strong motivation, or at least not to the extent of the antagonist Valentine. Therefore, Johnny goes from extremely selfish to just slightly less selfish, even at the end of the story. In part A, Jojolion, he's way different though, since his sacrifice for his own son could be viewed as the ultimate display of Johnny no longer being selfish. However, he didn't care about the consequences of stealing the holy corpse and burying it in Morio, so I guess it just extends to his own family, which is something that we already know. Inside the Jojo's Bizarre Adventure universe, a family is by far the most important thing for every main character, and even though Johnny might be selfish because of the actions of his father, he still cares about the people who he's close to. Johnny has never been an ally of justice or righteousness like his counterpart Jonathan, but he hasn't been totally distant from it either. He explicitly states this in his most notable speech against Valentine. Johnny says, quote, Yours might be the most righteous path, at least compared to mine, end quote. Me personally think that this perfectly illustrates that he has himself come to terms with his weakness, that being his motivation, and he's able to turn that into the resolve needed to have an equal motivation to Valentine. Him overcoming his own weakness is the resolve needed to make the shot against Valentine. So it's difficult to say if Johnny is a morally good character, but he's a damn good character nonetheless. The motivation is not the important part in the overall story since it's just a way to get everyone inside the Steel Ball Run race. But compare Johnny's motivations to Gyro's for example, you know, Gyro wants to get the prize money for the race because he feels terrible for the atrocities that he committed as an executioner and thinks that saving a child sentenced to death will redeem him somehow. Or maybe how about Hot Pants, who wants to collect all the corpse parts in order to redeem herself for sacrificing her brother to a bear for her own survival. Alright, I think I got it. The main theme of Steel Ball Run is to not strive for success like Valentine or Diego, but to strive for satisfaction. Thank you so much for watching. Alright, I have a hot take incoming, but the ending of Steel Ball Run is kinda the smartest thing ever written. It is a satirical take on the battle of good versus evil from part 1 and describes it in a world which neither win and instead what really matters is what you fight for and not how you act. After making the Jonathan Joestar series, yes, I will keep telling you to watch it. I think it's very interesting to watch the parallels between part 1 and 7. Araki makes these fictional characters feel more like people here than the heroes they were back in the early parts like, you know, in Phantom Blood or even Battle Tendency. I might even analyze the parallels in a future video, but until then, always be true to yourself and seek for your own satisfaction. I will see you in the next video, motherfucker.